Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, uh, living for Christ is a daily thing. It's not a one time I'm in, you know. Just like if you get picked for a basketball team, bro. Let's say you're sitting around middle school style, you know, and they picking teams, and you get picked. When you get picked on that team, you got to contribute to the team. They didn't pick you just to stand there. In that case, they can, you still be on the sidelines. <laughs> But they pick you to contribute in some form or fashion. You may not be the, the best dribbler. You may not be somebody who can drive the lane. You may just be a, a good defender. But he chose you for a reason. Just like a basketball team has different parts and people that do different positions, you have a position. He wouldn't have chose you just to stand idly by. No, he put you in the battlefield. I'm telling you, when you give your life to Christ, you step into from one way to another way. And you got to work for it. Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to bounce around a little bit because I want you to see something. I want you to see something. I'm going to start was Psalm chapter 17. I mean, chapter 103. I mean, yeah, 103 verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness and to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. How simple is that? The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his king, king the ruler of over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments. Hearken to the voice of the word. Look at it. Even the angels got commandments they got to go by. What makes you think you don't have to? Because you done read that the, the book and what Paul wrote. <laughs> People, y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up and smell the coffee. You understand? Wake up, people. It's very simple. You understand? I'm going to go to uh, Romans chapter 13. And I'm going to start with 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that love of another have fulfilled the law. Now, I know most of y'all going to stop right there. So the, the law is, you just got to love one another. All right, let's see. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. What's that? A commandment. Thou shalt not kill. A commandment. Thou shalt not steal. A commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. A commandment. Thou shalt not covenant, covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the saying, Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So why did he go over the commandments before he said it's summed up with love? If you love me, you keep my commands. Holy crap. That's very simple, ain't it? Very self-explanatory. I thought it was. Hmm. Oh, let's go to... Galatians chapter 5. I'm just going to start reading from verse 12. I would that were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not that liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. <laughs> what love is he talking about? If you love me, you keep my commands. If you fear me, you keep my commands. That's what was said, right? For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I'm going to stop right there. So, loving your neighbor as yourself means what? Loving your neighbor as you love yourself means what? I'm just being real with you now. What kind of love is God talking about? Worldly love, fleshy love. 
you know, if you abide in his commandments, I'm not even going to go into what most people try to say. Oh, the law is done away with. So many parts of the Bible, the Bible talks about living in the flesh and living the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. And, you know, we can't fulfill the law without the spirit, the fruits of the spirit. And one of the fruits of the spirit is love. But love, in a biblical sense, covers his commands. So if you love, if you love yourself, like God loved the church, and like God loves us, what well, I started off by reading Psalms. If you fear him, you keep his commands. If you don't, how can you say you fear God? How can you say the love of God dwells in you if you don't keep his commands? It doesn't work that way, people. You understand? It can't work that way. It's like saying you love your wife, but go out and cheat and club and party and fornicate and do all this other stuff. But I love her. I love her to death, man. But I'm just not going to do, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's not love. He said, perfect love cast out fear, but not the fear of God. Mm -hmm. Fear is towards man. You understand? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. If the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding, his commandments are true. He got commandments for the angels. What he said, what happened to the angels that left, left doing, following after God and did what they wanted to do? What happened to them? Where's a, it's a place made for them that don't do according to God's will. Because I see all these videos popping up of people saying we're no longer under. Because they take Paul's teachings and twist and turn them to fit their narrative. Paul never said he said, the works of the law are fulfilled through the Spirit. God has given you his Spirit. If the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling in you, you going to do what's fulfilling to him. My sheep know my voice. All these things come into play when you figure out, whoa, loving God and getting his Spirit helps me fight against sin and death and the flesh. So when you love people, you understand? You do people according to how God tells you to treat people. I tell people all the time, people, I tell people, I'll break it down to you. A lot of people got different ways of love. But according to the Bible, it's one way to love. Actually, one way with multiple ways. Do you understand? If you love, you don't covet. If you love, you don't commit adultery. If you love, you don't. You put the other God before God. Why did he say the commandments first? And all before that in Romans, he was talking about you're no longer under the law. You're on the, under you under grace. It's true. You understand? But the grace of the Lord, the Lord says he's hanging with the wicked every day. He says, says, says you continue in sin. Read the word very carefully, people, when you're reading it. Don't just take one liners and be like, hey, y'all, uh, you got to bounce around. And he says, his words remain. So if Psalms compares today, it's the same thing. It's no different for us that walk with the Lord. <laughs> yes, there's a, a process you go through when you're born again. And God starts cleansing you up and setting you on the right way and you learn from trial and, trial and error, and then you start using your discernment, but then you start asking for the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. We can't do this by ourselves. That's what he was saying about the law. You can't do this by yourself. You can read the Ten Commandments, but without Jesus, you're going to break those laws. If you're trying to save yourself through the law, that's what he means. You're indebted to do all of it because you're trying to save yourselves. You understand? You got to do everything that they says in the Old Testament, in the Torah. You got to do all that. You understand? But the thing is, with the Holy Spirit, you get the help to conquer sin. Through Jesus, you can conquer sin. You can conquer your own sin nature. Even Paul was saying, he's like, his body is wretched. We know it. Our bodies are wretched. He said he's happy for the grace of God. But not for us to continue in sin, but for us to continue in love, which is the love of the gospel, the love of the Holy Bible. We need it. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. So in that case, 
All you got to do is like, well, all you got to do is love people and shut the book and shut it down. Just put it down. But you got to understand how to love. What's that old, what's that song with uh, Lil Wayne? How to love, how to love. You want to learn how to love? Pick up your Bible. That'll teach you how to love. You love with righteousness. You don't love with evil. You don't love doing evil things. You understand? You love doing the right things. The right way. Because you got an example to set. You got to do the things that's pleasing to the Lord. So if you fear the Lord, you got to do the things that's pleasing to Him. That means obey Him. Obey His commands. Obey His ways. Now, I always sum it down with the ten. Because if you look about the love, they always talk. Everything surrounds the ten. Everything surrounds the ten. Marriage. All the thing the ten don't really cover is food, like what to eat. Now, if you read the Bible, the Bible says all this to be is clean, is received with Thanksgiving. That's, he even told you if you are a worker of his and you go to somebody's house and you eat what's presented before you, asking no questions. A servant is worthy of his meat. It's nothing that goes into a man of the fathers. Man, I read, read somebody talking about that, and they went on some. He definitely gonna drop the mic, and I was like, you need to pick the mic back up, cause you just misunderstood everything that Jesus was talking about. He was specifically talking about certain things. You see, food and what goes into your body doesn't control what you say. And even when the Bible talks about the temple of the Lord, he's talking about fornication. You understand? You gotta read this Bible to understand what His perfect will is. For your life and the life for others, so you can teach people the right way. You understand? What you eat, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds off the mouth of God. I know the Bible can be kind of contradictory a little bit, but you got to bear with him. He'll bring all things to remembrance what you need to know. Some people are still trying to justify themselves by everything that's written in Numbers, <laughs> everything that's written in Leviticus, but the 10. And love are the most important parts. The ten even covers the Sabbath day. Right? Now some people are going to tell you, don't eat meat, don't eat meat, don't eat this, don't eat that. Paul talks about that too. You understand? But you can eat anything. Oh, people are going to chew me out for this. What the Lord says, clean is clean and deep. He made a lot of few, few changes. Do you understand, people? So, if you think you're going to go to hell over a piece of pork, something wrong with you. I'm just being real. Think you're going to hell for that? It ain't going to happen, people. I'm just being real. You go to hell for breaking the ten. The ten. That's it. When he first came from the mountain, he gave he made the ten. The ten are so important. That he made them twice to give to you. Made them twice. That's his love. You want to know the love of God? The Ten Commandments. And the only way you can feel fulfill that is with love and with the Spirit. You can't do this on your own. You know, a lot of people, I'm just a good person. But if you're doing it for your own, that means you don't sin. That means like you don't feel you have to ask for forgiveness. So you're going to die in your sin because you feel you're sin free. Mm -hmm. But a real true Christian realizes the error of his ways and confesses his sin. He said, if you say you don't sin, that makes you a liar. Then he said, don't sin. Then sin, he said, sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate to the Father. And most people are like, well, that's kind of contradictory. He's saying you're going to make some special, you're going to make mistakes, you're going to fall short a few times in your life. And when you do fall short, ask for forgiveness for your sins. You know the 10, the 10. Uh, sums up everything else in this world. Everything else. The Sabbath day is in there. Everything's in the Ten. Everything you can possibly think of is in the Ten Commandments. It covers everything. But Jesus goes even further and starts breaking it down more and more. Just keep to us the love of God. Keep His Ten. Please do that. Have a blessed day.